I created a little loop here, much like I want you to do for this assignment. So this is 14 bars long, right? It ends just before the downbeat of the 15 bar, 15th bar. And I've got four instances of boom, of uh, structure free. I'm using funky drummer, Winstock chimes, the bass melodica, and the red rocks. And then the rest of these sounds are all filled in with uh, stuff from expand and boom. So let me play this cheesy groove. Okay, 1970s um, cheesy TV music. So, okay, yes, it could cartoon opening, ringtone. It's kind of funny, right? But let's let's just take a look at what I've done. So, this is what I've done with the funky drummer. Uh, let's not look at it here. Let's look at it here. So I'm going to solo it, and you see that I've reordered. The, all of the hits, I've treated them like separate instruments, and I've reordered re the drum fill. Right? Okay, so like I said, I've reordered the drum fill. And then on top of that, I've added some hi-hats from Boom. I'll just pick it up from here. Okay, and I used, actually, I have to be honest here, I used Russell's um, sample edits. He did a good job. Everybody did a good job. Uh, just a couple of small little details that needed to be straightened out, but overall, everybody did a great job. So, um, all right. Now, the next thing I did here was I've got these Woodstock chimes, and let's show you what I did with them. I went to edit two, right? Edit two. And I just added a low pa pass filter and I just cut off some of the high. And I left the attack, the whole decay, all that. And I just added a little bit of release. And I'm gonna mute some of the effects I added. So it's basically the sound with just some of the high end taken off. And I just played a, a little figure, right? B flat, B flat, C, or whatever key I'm in. It's the flat seven to the tonic. I changed the rhythm the second time around. And if I if I um, turn off the low pass filter, you'll hear the see it's much brighter. And I just want it a little darker. You don't have to do that. That's just a choice I made. And right here. I got rid of the low end. I added a high pass filter, right? So I have a low pass filter to cut off some of the high end to make it darker and a high pass filter to get rid of anything in the low end that might conflict with the bass drum or the bass or the bass guitar. You won't really be able to hear a difference there. But with my headphones on, I can hear a subtle difference. I mean, if I really exaggerated it,
but I just got rid of some of the low end. Now, what I did for this though, was I put it through a, a delay and you can hear that it's really does some nice stuff. Right, there's a little bit did it, did it after the fact. And I'll show you how I've set up the delay in a second. But let me just go through the track. So we've got, now we've got the bass melodica and I'm only playing a couple of notes on it. Uh, whoops, let's see, right here. And I've got delay on it and it sounds like reverb because the notes are really long as opposed to being very short where you can hear all the repeats. All the repeats, all the feedback from the delay is sort of blending in with the sustained note, which gives it the illusion of it actually being almost a little bit more like a reverb sound. Let's see what I've done with this. So the same with this, a little cutoff, low pass filter, I changed the attack just a little bit and added some release. And also here, and I might have done this with the uh, Woodstock chimes as well, I changed the velocity sensitivity to make it a little bit more sensitive to, if I play soft and if I play loud, it gets louder. So it's just a, it just turn, it just makes it softer if you play soft and louder if you play loud, harder. And if you bring it all the way here, you have no velocity sensitivity. And over here, it's the most. I just wanted a little velocity sensitivity with this one. Now we've got the red rocks here, and I'm going to mute the effects. So it's playing two different clave rhythms, right? You can, one, it's three, two, two, three, bop, bop. So the first time the fifth hit is, de is delayed a little bit. So it's bop, 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 right? So the first time through the three, two clave is just a little bit of var variation on it. So the first thing I did was I added some of that delay to it. Right, adds a little bit more rhythm and then put a little reverb on it. And that goes nicely with the funky drummer and the boom hats. And I'll do one bar before the drums and bass uh, and hi-hats come in. So it's funny because now all of a sudden, when I first listened to the hi-hats uh, a couple of minutes ago playing solo, all I could hear in my head was the song Sol Makosa from the 1970s, Mano de Bongo, which I used to play in a band. Um, that's why I'm familiar with it. But the rhythm of the hi-hats is doing that. Now I can't stop hearing it. Um, I don't know if any of you know that song, but it's, it's fun. All right. So that's the Red Rocks. Then we've got a Rhodes electric piano here. It's just a suitcase. And I haven't really done anything to that. I just added some reverb, I left it alone. But one thing I wanna show you with this is, let's see, this won't be completely accurate, but let me just do this for those of you that can read music. Notice that there's very little activity with my left hand. I've just got these, I've just got these uh, little notes down here on the bottom, the C's, right? And they're very short, but there's nothing really low. Well, there's a B here. That might have been a mistake, but everything is up in this area here, and I'm leaving. I don't need to have, you know, I don't need to have. I could have that, but I wanted to leave space for the bass. So this is a perfectly fine.
right? This this is really only just sort of like helping me to keep time by playing that subdivision there. So that's an interesting thing. So like if you add the bass in and you solo the bass. Right, it doesn't, nothing the piano is doing gets in the way of the bass. There's no cross rhythms. There's nothing muddy. There's nothing messy. There's nothing down there except the bass. And that will make your life easier when you're mixing, right? So part of writing tracks is mixing while you're writing. Will I play left hand on electric piano parts like that? Yeah, I will sometimes. Sure, no problem. Definitely will. But um, not for this track. Okay, and then there's a clavinet, and I'm going to close all the effects and the reverb, and that is over here. So a clavinet is a keyboard... Oh, what did Huna say? I'm sorry. You, you're you're muted. I can't hear you. It's uh, so. Can you type? I'm not sure if I can hear you guys. I could hear Arun before, so I think it's just Huna. So if she uh, types in the question, Huna, please. I'm going to continue on, and I'll read the question in a second. Um, so a clavinet is a keyboard instrument where this, instead it's, the strings are plucked instead of struck with a hammer. It's almost like a harpsichord. Um, you've heard clavinets. Stevie Wonder famously, St Superstition has clavinet keyboards. It was, it's big in jazz funk. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. So if you want in the edit window to see sheet music notation, right over here, there are some notes. If you click on that, there's more to get the, sh the music to look good, right? There's a whole setup, which maybe I'll go over that again in a future class. Uh, there are all set set up things you have to do in order to make the music sheet music look good in pro tools but um let me continue on with this so so the, the one that i picked is just a straight clavinet and that's a very piercing sound i, I didn't like it um it's not a really well sampled example of the instrument so the first thing I did was I put the Sans Amp, which you guys should have this plug-in in your Pro Tools setups. And I add some dirt. Right, so that makes it a lot better for me. And then for this one, I, I did what I don't normally teach is I inserted delay right into the signal path. And the reason for that is I wanted a different delay for this one than I wanted for just the general delay that's being used on all the other instruments. I wanted more feedback, I wanted more echoes, and I right here, I don't know if you could see this, but I did the high pass filter, a low pass filter, and I got rid of some of the high end on this, so it's not so clean. So with this on the left side, I have a dotted eighth note rhythm, and on the right side, I've got a dotted quarter note rhythm. So let's see. Let me see if I... Okay, great. So we'll listen to this, and you'll only hear the dotted eighth note. Well, for you guys, it'll all be coming out of the center because you don't have stereo, but if you look at listen to the review video, which should be in stereo, uh, out of the left ear, you're going to hear a dotted eighth note. Right now, if I dry that, and I think I had this up around here. Right, so 
that's a dotted quarter note. And then when you add the two of them together, it's cool, right? So you can add those, comp you can create these complex rhythms that are really complementary <clears throat> and help this part stand out from the rest of the crowd. And then next, I just used some, uh, these cheap strings. And then what I did with them was I changed the attack right here. So I made it a slower attack and I added some release. And I might've played around with the cutoff a little bit. Let me see. No, I did not. Okay. So these are supposed to sound like, I don't know if you guys ever listened to Herbie Hancock's um, Headhunters. He used like these ARP string, uh, string machines, ARP Odyssey, Freeman string synthesizers. And they had this like, they, were, they weren't sample based instruments. They were all done with waveforms and they had a certain sound to them. You know, um, they sort of sounded like strings. Uh, they're really cool for this style, right? So I kind of tried to go for that with this instead of having it sound like real strings. And then I've got that going through some reverb. And then I have some, the brass is really cheesy. So let me just show you what I did with this. I called up the sax section, which is number 19 in the presets here. And I did a couple of things. The first thing was that the highest pitched sax was a solo uh, soprano saxophone. And I didn't like that. So I substituted it for a, a trumpet and I got access the trumpet. Well, you'll see that there's four instruments in each, one in each slot. So baritone, tenor, alto, and solo trumpet. This was originally, like I said, saxophone. I went in here, whoops, uh, brass and woodwinds, and I went to solo trumpet and I added the solo trumpet there. That's the first thing I did. Then the second thing I did was I changed the level so that they balanced out the way I wanted to. These slide left and right. And I had the baritone sax panned all the way to the left and the alto sax all the way to the right, the tenor a little bit off to the left and the trumpet a little bit off to the right, maybe a little bit more. And the last thing I did was I went into this area here and I transposed the baritone saxophone down an octave. So. These are not great brass samples. It's not going to sound great, but let's just take a listen. Right, you can hear they're an octave. So if I take this and I make this down to zero again, right, that doesn't really do anything for me. So if I just drag this down an octave, minus 12, so it's minus 12 because it's 12 half steps, right? And I've got that going through reverb. And then when you hear that with everything, I don't have the brass very loud in the mix, right? I've got the clavinet and the bass and the electric piano, which all sound pretty good, loud enough, pretty loud in the mix. Now, one thing I'm noticing now with my headphones is that the bass is a little loud. So I'm gonna turn that down a little bit here. That's better. Oh, I didn't realize I still have a brass riff there. So I just turned the roads down a little bit. Okay. Any questions on this so far? Right? This is not that difficult. You guys could all sequence something like this. So what are the next steps, right? There's a couple of ways of going about this. 
you could just solo. You, we're going to do make sub mixes of all these. Maybe I don't know how many I can figure out. And then I'm going to we'll map them on the keyboard with keyboard names and then load those sub mixes into structure so that you will be able to play this whole piece with different arrangements and different breakdowns from just pressing keys on your keyboard. So that's the end goal, right? You'll have a piece of music with one instance of structure and then just some, some notes where you're playing the piece of music. Okay. That's a lot different than what the original assignment for this part of the semester would be. But I think it's a really cool exercise. You'll learn a lot of techniques, and it's the best thing we can do given the limitations of structure. Some of the benefits of contact is that you have much, much more access to editing the samples inside of contact. You can lock the samples to the tempo. So you could have a drum loop in there and play it at any tempo, and it will lock to the tempo. It'll stretch the sample out. And it, it does within within reason. It does a good job. It doesn't enter. It doesn't add a lot of artifacts to the sound to ruin it. So, I guess the thing that you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to um, give me one second. I can't see the corner of the screen because of my camera's in the way. Okay. <laughs> Great. I have a, the camera right here, and right behind it is where the co bottom corner of the Pro Tools screen is, so it's hard for me to drag it out to fill the screen. Um, all right. So we have basically 10 tracks here. You want to go through your track and figure out, like, what are some of the cool elements, right? So, for example... So th those two bars are cool. So I'm going to take my grid and I'm going to set it up to one bar and I'm going to do something here which is new for me to teach you guys, I believe. And I'm going to highlight my groups right here that says all. We haven't added any groups. We don't need to. And then I'm going to click on this little button here to the left, this little dot, and then you'll see they all become highlighted and they all become highlighted here. And now if I just go like this, you see how I can just grab that two, those, this two bars right here? I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste this over here, and then you'll see that I've just got... So... I would then bounce that to disk and make that a audio clip that we can enter into structure and play one key and it would play that loop that right there. Oh, the other good thing about contact that I don't know how to, I don't think you can do in the free version of structure is that you can loop something indefinitely. So I could set this up and I can set up start and end points inside the waveform inside of contact and it will just play it. You press the key once and it'll just play it over and over again. So that's one thing we can do. But what I would suggest doing is starting from the beginning and working your way through the end of the piece. You don't have to do, take every element. So for example, all right, so let's take this two bars right here, okay? Let's put this here, and then I'm gonna add a marker. And I'm going to call this uh, Rock Clave. And then I have to undo all of this grouping thing because I'm going to mute the electric piano. And then all I'll have is this. And then let's go back to our groups. And then I, so now I've got all the groups activated again. 
So if I paste here, it will paste all of that stuff we copied. And then now we've got this here. And then this would be, um, oops, sorry. I would call this Clave Roads. Let's do this. I'm going to make another suggestion that'll make it easier later. Rock, clave, and we're going to C2. We're going to actually assign pitches as we're making this. This way, we could just copy and paste this into when it's bouncing to disk. We could just copy and paste this into the name, and you don't have to worry about it. You've got it all done. You're figuring out your mapping, and we're going to stick with mapping this all on the white keys, which makes it easier to play. All right. So I can edit those markers and you enter a marker for those that don't know how to do it or a memory location just by hint. I'll show you that in a second. So let's do un underscore uh, D2, which is the next pitch up. So give me one second. Ah, great. So let's say I want to put a marker right there. If I just hit the enter key, it enters, it opens up the marker, okay? So most of you should know that, but some of you might have forgotten that. Oh, <laughs> cancel here. Okay, so what's next? Well, we got this part here where the bass comes in. So let's copy that four bars right there, okay? And we'll put this here. Oh, and we'll make a marker. And we'll call this um, full intro. So this will be E2. So now we've got right from that little bit Right here, we've got three completely different little clips that we can program in. And then we've got this. And we've got this. Oh, you know, we don't want that. We want to get rid of that drum. So again, I'm hitting the option key and clicking on any of these names, right? The option key, and it will unhighlight those. And then I have to go over into the groups area and make sure that that is not also highlighted. That's a little cumbersome, um, but I don't know if there's a key command that can unhighlight and ungroup everything. There might be, but I don't know it. And maybe I should learn that. <laughs> so let me just get rid of that drum. Which brings us to another point is that I'm going to have to clean up and make sure that this first drum hit is right on the downbeat. Okay, which I did in the editor. All right, so now we'll activate our groups again and we're going to copy. Okay, so we're going to do these, this two bars here. And we'll paste this here. And let me just do one thing here. So again, I've got this drum right here on a downbeat, which I don't want. So it's seeming like some of my drum downbeats are a little bit early. So let's just fix those. Uh, so let me just show you what I'm doing here. So I know that the drum downbeats are here, the kick drum. So if I click on this C right here, which is this pitch, like you see, if I click on the pitch on the keyboard, it becomes purple. See that? So you know that that's the pitch of that particular note. And so if I click there, you see how they all become 
highlighted. So I go option zero. I'm just going to quantize these. I groove quantize these. I'm going to quantize these to a 16th note. Yeah, and they'll, they'll all be on the downbeat going forward. Or on, on the grid going forward. Okay, great. So I won't have that problem the next time I copy and paste something. Great. So I'm going to copy this and paste this a couple of times. Now, watch this. I'm hold, I'm, I highlighted this top one. I'm holding down the shift key. Let's, I'm also going to drag these red rocks so that they're up by the drums. Okay, so I'm going to, I clicked on the chimes, holding the shift key down. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Oh, huh, it's not doing it. Interesting. Well, if I hold the shift key down and click, they will all be selected, right? If I just click on them, you see how it changes the selection? So I click on the top one, hold the shift key down, and click on all the ones ascending, and I'm going to, I can either delete or mute those. So if you want to mute those, it's Command M, and you see how they become grayed out? If you want to delete those, which we can, it just hit the delete key, and they all go away. So now what we've got right here, Mama soul, mama sa, mama kusa, mama soul, mama sa, mama makusa. Yeah, really, it really, oh boy. <laughs> it really sounds like that. Okay, so now I've got that. So let's see. So this is, um, hit the enter key, and this is, I'll just call this verse groove. And this will be F2 because my last note was C2. And then now, let me move the bass guitar so that it's right below the drums. And I'm going to mute this, all these things, right? Or I, I'm just going to delete them. I don't need them. And now I've got... Right? Now, I, this, this is... Um, first groove bass, and this is G2. If... If you guys have questions, you know, definitely ask me, you know, or type them in and let me know that there's a question, someone. Okay, so what else can I do? Um, you know what I can do? Let me show you something a little trickier. So I'm going to get rid of all of these, and then I'm going to open up the drum track. And I'm going to get rid of everything on the drum track except the kick, kick drum. Right, so how I did that was I could lasso everything using the grabber tool. Oh, I actually have to do that with the grabber tool. I'm sorry, otherwise I would have raced all these drums over here. Duh. So I'm just going to lasso that here. No, I'm in the wrong spot. Hold on a second. I want to be here. Great. So you see how I highlighted this one here? And then these notes became highlights. So I'm just going to get rid of these, all those other instruments. And then right here, I've got bass drum and electric piano. Uh, I could even leave that stupid brass riff in there if I wanted to, but I don't. And you know what? I think maybe I'm going to put the hi-hats back in. So I'm going to click on this, hold down the option key, and then I can shift, drag, cl click and drag that and it will just duplicate it. So now I've got this. Right, so I've got all these sub-mixes I'm making. 
I can go through this whole piece and and do this and create 15 or 20 submixes and then export these all as clips and then program them into structure. So let me just do a couple of more. And so now, so I'll call this roads and drums. And this will be AA2. And this is verse part one. And then I'm going to copy all that. So I select A and then copy verse part one. And then this will be B2. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to select everything again. And I got to get the second part of the verse. So I'm going to copy that. Paste that here. Uh, verse part two. Uh, so I can just paste that in. Right. Two. And then this will be. C3, so I'm on the next octave already. You know, I could, so this is kind of cool. Right, so that could be a, that could be a, like a loop that I create that I can play. So, but the first thing I want to do is I want to copy So I'm going to make two bar. Let me think about this for a second. I'm going to copy all of this right now. All right. I'm only going to do a couple more and then I'm going to program them. And I'll show, so we'll, you know, I'm going to keep moving forward. So I've put everything there and then now I can, Hold the option key down, click here, and then just click here so that it's unhighlighted. And now we're back to normal. All right, so. Actually, you know what? That's that's wrong on my part. Let me just do, paste a few, a few times. So I've got a four of these here. So now let me just hold the option key down and click here and then hit all. So what happens if I solo this and this? So that could be a loop so that there's no bass, right? So I'm going to get rid of this, and it's only two bars long, so I'm going to get rid of this. And there's no strings, and it's only two bars long, so I'm going to get rid of these two and get rid of this. So this is one of my... So, you know, you could do this, right? I think this is the key command. Oh, sorry. See how it loops? It works perfectly well. And then if I went here. And then right here. So you could just, and you know, then you could go back to this. So you've got all these different mixes, submixes of this. So, okay, so that's one. I'm going to do one that's full. Okay. Great. And then 
I'm going to do one that's the second half, so I'll get rid of the first half. Um, let me just think about this for a second. Now, there's an issue here. If you look at this track, you see how this note lingers on afterwards, right? So we're going to have to do some editing on this one here so that it starts on the third bar. So very quickly, what you can do here is, let's see, what bar do I want to cut it off on? I want to cut it off on 62. Okay. So strings. And we're right here. So let me just show you a little trick. You could, you could just delete these this and then use the trimmer tool and go backwards. But if I hang in the... Um, ruler here and I, I get on 62 and then I do command E it splits everything in half and then you can just delete that and then you can do the same thing with this and get rid of whatever's after afterwards so that's how you clean that stuff up really quickly okay so what we're going to do is we're going to delete all this stuff right <laughs> So this is interesting because this riff starts in the middle of the bar. So what I think we'll do is we'll just do this much. And again, we're going to have to go here and clean up the strings because I didn't quantize them. I don't want to have that note hanging out. All right, so we've got this. That's kind of cool. So you break the, 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 the tyranny of two and four bar phrases by having one that's a, uh, a bar and a half, right? So that's kind of cool. So let me just clean up the strings here and make sure that everything's on the beat. So let me just quantize that. All right, so with this one, so with this one here, we want to get rid of we want to get rid of this, all this. And then we only have. Now let's let's name these. We haven't done our. So what is this? So this let's call this the chorus breakdown, right? And then this would be D three. That's our next pitch. And this is. This is the full chorus part uh, part one. So. Copy that. Okay. Oh, we need a pitch. So that last one was D3. So this will be E3. And then now. So these two seem to be the same. So let me make another uh, let me make another breakdown. So let's do this. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. Right? And then we'll just have this bass and drum. So so chorus B and D. So that'll be on E E3. C H B and D bass and drums or D and B. Let's do it that way. D and B. Okay, so that's the full chorus. 
So I can just paste that in there. And what pitch are we on now? We are on F3. Okay, so right here, full chorus part two. And I think we're on G, is that correct? Yes, G3. Now, I'm going to take that end riff. Hmm. So there's several ways that you could play this. You could leave it as it is, right? Which I think I might do. And what I can do is I could just get the last. So this needs to be quantized because I could see that it's not right. So let's do this. Let's quantize this to 16th notes. Great. So I'm just going to get this right here. And I'm going to paste this here and then... Right, we need an end button. So we'll just have an end button. A3. So we have So check this out. I don't know if I've taught you this in Pro Tools yet. If you go to, to Window and you do Memory Locations, it'll bring up this window. On an extended Mac keyboard, it's Command and the number 5 on the keypad over here. Not this 5, but this 5. And it brings up all of your memory locations. And you see right here that we've got 13. And what I can do is I can go to any of these by entering some commands on my computer keyboard. So I'm going to close this right now for the time being. I don't need it. And if I want to play rock clave, if I go decimal point, one decimal point, right? And then if I want to go to, if I want to go to, let's say the verse groove bass, that's five. So decimal point, five decimal point. Right, so I'm just sort of using the key command to just go back and forth, and you could see that all, right, that's, we're going to be doing that on the keyboard after we program it in. So you could create new arrangements on the side. Yes, thank you, Arun. Um, I used to play that song in the summer of 19, either 79 or 80, I forget which one it is, but it was between semesters at the college, and I had a five-afternoon-a-week gig out in West Hampton Beach with a funk jazz, funk, fusion, reggae band uh, called Straight Up. And um, that was one of the tunes we did. It's a lot of fun. It was also easy to learn. Okay, so this all seems to work. So now what do we do, right? We have to um, export all these, bounce them all to disk. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go through this whole procedure. All right, so I'm going to double click here. This comes up. I'm going to copy this name. Okay. And then I'm going to select this. Now, this is really important. If we were just going to be looping this in contact, it doesn't really matter. If, if we were going to be making loop packs that people would want to play, and right? We would just select just this much. But because we're going to play this on a keyboard and program it ourselves, we're going to go a little further than the end because we want to get the tail of the reverb or any delay, right? Because if I do this and I play this, oh, hold on a second. This is what would be bounced to disk. But there's after the after the 
measure ends, after this highlighted area, there's still a couple of... Um, there's still a couple of sounds happening from the echo, right? It's going past the beat. So for our purposes for this class, we're going to capture those as part of the loop. If you were making a professional sample pack, you probably wouldn't do that. Something that was going to be programmed into contact, you, prop, you might not do that. You would have to f figure out whether you think it's better to have all that or not. For this particular project, for what we're doing, I think it's better to have it. Okay, so I'm going to select a little bit beyond here, and then I'm going to do Command, Option, and the letter B, right? And then I'm going to select this and delete, and then I'm going to paste in Rock Clave C2, right? So we named it as we went along, which makes it easier now to keep track of things. And then I'm going to bounce offline to disk, Excuse me. <coughs> Let me just double check that that worked. Great. Okay, then I'm going to go here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit beyond. Double click right here on the name. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to select it again. I'm going to have to select it again. So I double clicked on the name. I'm going to copy that, hit OK, and then I'm just going to select that again. And then Option, Command, B. And then I'm going to just paste that name in there. And so I guess what I'll do is I'll copy the name first. All right, so I'm just going to do this, and um, I'm just going to do this and not talk so I can just get through it really quickly. And again, if you've got questions, ask. Copy. Yes, Huna. You have a question? You're going to have to type it in. I can't hear you, so you're going to have to type it in. Um, let's see, where was I? Oh, I know, because, right, I can't hear you, but what happens is that something goes on and you you become the focal point on the screen while I'm doing stuff. You understand what I, you know what I mean? So if I keep you muted, then you, you, you don't, it stays on the Pro Tools screen. So like, if you talk right now, I can't hear you. But see what happens? You become the screen, right, until I talk again. So that's why I muted you. Okay, great. So um, let's see. I think I was here. Let me just double check my... No, so I'm at full intro. Give me one second. I got a little confused there. So I just want to check which ones I've bounced. So I've got Clave Roads, Full Intro, and Rock Clave. So I'm on the next one. So I'm on Verse Groove F2. All right, great. So I've copied a little bit more. Great. And then Bounce. And then here I want to get my name. Paste. You know, you could see as you do this, see how fast I can work here, right? And a lot of this is key commands. And a lot of your time is wasted by naming things, which is why I name things as I go along because it keeps track of what I'm working on and it helps me speed things up right now when I just want to get done with this 
and start programming. Whoops. So let's go. Whoops. Let's copy. Let's get this. Yeah, so, okay, okay, I could show you that, Huna. Good question. Give me one second, and I'll show you that, all right? Okay, so if you don't have those side keys, right, you go to window and you bring up memory locations. And then what you can do is click there. I'm just clicking on that number or anywhere in there. Okay, let me see where we were again. I've got a very small attention span. So we've got first part two, C3. No, hold on a second. Okay, so now we're into the chorus. I hope this is right. Okay, yes, we're right here. So we're in the chorus breakdown. So let me copy that. Copy. Paste. Copy, bounce, paste, copy. Well, uh, sorry, I gotta do that copy first. Make sure you go far enough that you'll get all the echoes. Bounce. So to highlight this, I just double click in this field here. And copy. Okay. So I'm done with this. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my groups are all unactive before I send it to anybody and hit return. And I'm going to save this as sampler comp with edits. Today's the 21st, so I've got my diary. All right, so I'm gonna close this. Now, to close this session without quitting Pro Tools, does everybody know what that key command is? Probably not. It's Command, Shift, and the letter W. Command, Shift, N. Uh, oh, just command N, right. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm going to call this structure final. And I save it to my desktop. And what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, command shift N. I'm just going to do one stereo instrument track. And I'll call this, um, I don't know, I'll call this Final Groove, whatever. You can make up your own name. And I'm going to import, I'm going to have structure, free. Oh, before I do anything, hold on. Haha. -ha. I need to take these bounced files. And I need to rename them. Uh, 
um, song, maybe I'll call them song loops. Something like that. And I have to, what I'm going to do, I, I don't need to have them in the original folder anymore. So I can just drag them so that they're now in my session folder for this new composition. This way, when you send it to me, Pro Tools will open up and it will know to look into this folder for the, for all these audio files for structure. So I'm going to right click here and remove patch. And then let me get my, my guys here. Boom. And from name, prefix, and then note, fill centered. And hopefully this will now work. Oh, wait. There we go. Right, so you see how like I can extend the intro now? Now, the other thing, unfortunately, so I'm going to call this uh, Pete's Groove. Unfortunately, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remember what tempo your original piece was because structure will not lock to beat, right? That's one of the... That's a really severe limitation of this software. I don't remember whether the full version of structure does that, but if I were to load this into Pro Tools, I could set it up so that all of these loops, all of these grooves tempo locked to the beat, and I could do whatever beat I want within reason. I can't make it twice as fast, it won't sound good, or half as fast, but I could go 10 or 15 beats in either direction and it will lock into a groove, but we can't do that with this, unfortunately. So we just have to make do with our situation. So I, I forget what the last one was. So I'm gonna save this and I'm just gonna open up that last one really quickly um, and see what my tempo was. 96, all right, so let me close this. Actually, if you go to open recent, structure final, it'll just close this. So 96 is my tempo. And then I've never taught you this before. <laughs> so I'm going to make this be um, one bar long. So that's all an octave too high. All right, so let me... Uh... So do you know that... Um... Let me uh, switch scenes. So we don't typically... I've not taught you to edit inside of the Arrange page. So the way that you get to here is if you take the pencil and you set up your grid for, for a, whole, uh, a whole measure, which I did up here for one bar, and you just go to the pencil tool, you start drawing in here, it will go from clips to notes. I don't like to work this way with complicated things because then this gets a, to be very sloppy, the edit page, but this is perfectly fine for here. So now I put these in there an octave too high. To bring them down an octave, you hold down the shift key and then you push the down arrow. Thank you. 
So this is just sloppy. I would have to, I, I might even just perform something in there. So let's do this. Oh, the chord enable. And then go back and quantize it afterwards. So two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So notice I'm holding two keys down now. Right, you could do stuff like that and um, my timing wasn't completely perfect on these bigger notes. So what I'm gonna do probably is just quantize these so they all start right on the beat. And then I'm gonna get rid of this. So notice how I hover over here. This is going way too past the um, bar line. So if I do command E, it separates that and then I can just easily get rid of that. So you could see already that I've done a few things with this. I've got my introduction here, which is my clave rocks, my Rhodes and my clave. And then now, and the next bit, right, I've got the bass coming in, which is this top loop, keeping the bottom loop going. And then here, just the drums, and then a couple of hits. So that did it, did, 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 that's not really in time. So I'm just gonna grab that and I'm going to quantize that to 16th notes. And that should be more in time. And then I could come in right here with the... Um, so one, two, three, four. I'm off beat, right? So you can see I got a little off time there. It's not not that easy, but we're just I'm just jamming along with something and then I'll just fix it now. Oh, hold on, we don't want the count off anymore. So you can see that I've created So with something like this, you want to make sure that none of your notes are overlapping. Because if you listen, if you see right here, this note here is overlapping the bottom note into the next one. So they'll both sound, it'll be a little bit weird. So you can actually quantize the duration of notes. So if you option zero and you quantize the note off and those are, quart I think those are, let's just do eighth notes, apply note off turn that on okay great and there it fixed it for me all right let's play let's play a little bit more to Three and four and. Okay, so that's, uh, there's a little off timing there. Fix that. So let's see. Go change this to half note. Because remember, this one was six beats. Right, so one, two, three, four. Oh, I'll tell you in a second, Roberto. Okay, so note off. The beginning of the note, which is this part right here of this note, that's the, when you push the keyboard, the key down. Note off is when you let go of the key. So that's the start time and the end time of the note. Does that answer your question, Roberto? So... You're quantizing not only the note on, but the note off. Uh, I find that helpful for situations like this.
and then you could just turn it off um, when you're done with that. So let's see. So we've got here. Uh, and then if I want to make a quick ending, I could just pop that in right there, right? And make sure you hold your note down long enough that you hear the last repeat. Whoop. Uh, so. Okay, so I just completed the assignment, which is going to be like in two weeks from now due. So for this week, hopefully you've handed in your sampler instruments, right? And then for next week, and I'll write this out and I'll pop it up onto um, Google Classroom. So for next week, you want to have your 16-bar composition Whatever it is, notice how I made the composition, and it 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 was just an introduction, a four bar group boot loop, and then another four bar loop and an end. So that's basically for next week. And then if you can finish that, and start making your 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 remixes of your sections like we did in the previous session here, right, where I copied and pasted and I muted certain instruments and I created all these alternative mixes. And I, I created all these alternative mixes of that very small amount of material. That's, that'll be the next step and then create a composition from that that you'll end up sending me a session for the final project that looks sort of like this. I could sit here and spend an hour and come up with something that's really cool you know, by doing more of things like this here, uh, hold on, of this here and doing weird stuff with this and, you know, like with the ending note. And then, so you can't see this, but if I were to... So right here, it, it, it maps these things out chromatically. So just because these are all in the white keys, it'll 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 play it. It'll be a little bit faster, but it'll see how that's the same riff, but it's a half step higher. It's a little faster, but you can use that to create some key, some cool step sliding. You know, like Herbie Hancock would do when he's comping. Um, Right, so you could change key like that and do things like that to add a little bit interest to your to your mixes, if you want. Right, you hear stuff like that on the radio all the time. You know, it's stupid, but it's just something. It's 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 it just opens your mind up to hearing these things and thinking about this music a little bit differently. Any questions on that? So for next week, you're going to take your samples that you've created and you're going to um, create, a, you're going to, you know, the, your structure programs and you're going to create a piece of music that's 16, 14, you know, 8 or 12, just a short, not a long piece. You can use other instruments like I did. I used boom and structure. You can add some effects like I did, which really help. And then that'll be due for next week. And then the following week, you'll take that composition, you'll copy and paste sections further on down the timeline, and you will create alternate mixes. I did 13 or 14 of them. As many as you think will be necessary. Don't make 20 mixes. Don't make anything more than 12, let's say. All right? Alternate mixes. Don't, don't make 500 alternate mixes. Just keep it. I, it's mostly that I see that you understand the technique. And then for two weeks from... T to, uh, oh, that's another point which I didn't bring up last week. So this will be due uh, next Tuesday because we don't have class Monday. Monday, a week from now, is uh, uh, Yom Kippur, I think. And so school is closed. 
Tuesday is a Monday schedule. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so the 28th is Yom Kippur. And at Queens College, the 29th follows a Monday schedule. So for next week, you'll, you'll program a, little, a short little piece like this using your samplers and a few other instruments. Four or five other instruments. I don't know. I only had five, I, four or five other. I had maybe, I think I maybe had 10 instruments in total. And then for two weeks from today, you'll spend that week making all your different sections and your submixes. You'll bounce them all to disk and then you'll program it into structure and you'll send, for two weeks from today, you'll send me something that looks like this that sounds amazing. I have confidence in all of you. Yes, Irene, you have a question? So I can't hear you either. So you'll have to type it in. Oh, hold on. Uh, I can't hear you. Can you say something now, Irene? I can't hear you, so you're going to have to type it in. I, I, yeah, you're going to have to type it in as a message on the chat. Tick, 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 tick. Are you going to ask the question or Irene? Oh, I see. That was your picture. <laughs> so are you going to chat? type it into the chat? All right. So when you do, I'll, I'll read it back. Oh, so Huna. No, there's, there's an assignment for next week, right, which is making your piece with your sampler instruments. So that's due Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. Then two weeks from today... You'll hand me in something that looks like this, right? So for the next week, you'll be writing a piece of music that's like 10, 12, 14, 16 bars long. That's for next Tuesday. Then for the following week, you will take that piece of music and you will make little alternate mixes of one or two or four bar sections. You'll name them like we, I name them. And you'll bounce each one of those to disk and then quickly pro, it didn't take me, how long did it take me to program this structure? It took me two, like 30 seconds. And then cr create, you'll have a, so that shouldn't take you very long. And then you'll create a little track like this. All right. So, okay, use your own recordings, audio recordings as well. Um, oh, to make sampler instruments, Irene? Uh, well, you've already edited these, so you're going to edit some other ones? Yes, you can. I would like to use some of the ones. The problem is that uh, we can only use four structures per session, which stinks. So I do want you to use some of the ones that you've already edited so I can see that you've learned how to program based upon the editing. So, yes, you can use maybe... If you want to use one track of yours, your own audio recordings, yes, you can do that. It's also good for me to see what everybody does with the same, inf with the same materials. Okay, so Huna, do you understand? Yeah, so just for the, for the next week, just worry about making a little composition with the samplers instruments, uh, with the sampler instruments and um, a few other instruments. Just worry about that for next week. That's next Tuesday. And then I'll, re you know, I'll go over the assignment again, but I think you understand what we've got going on. Okay. Great. So let me close this out.
All right. So we're going to move on to something else today. This won't be part of an assignment, but this is just part of general knowledge. All right. And this stuff is found in the folder for class three. And some of this stuff you already know, but let's just codify this. All sounds, musical or otherwise, are created by sending vibrations through the air. Right? These are felt in your ears. While you perceive of a sound as having just one pitch, a sound actually contains multiple pitches at different volumes sounding simultaneously. These can be broken up into the fundamental pitch, which is most often the loudest pitch. It's the, it's the note, that, the pitch that you hear the most of. And then harmonics above that pitch. Sometimes the harmonics, depending upon the instrument can be heard and, and how you're playing the instrument, can be heard below the pitch. So for example, if I had an acoustic piano and I held the sustain pedal down so that all of the strings, the dampers on all the strings rang up, I could silently hold a low key down, just press it so it makes no note, or I, I could just play a pitch and it will sympathetically resonate pitches below the, pian below the fundamental. So in certain instances, you can hear notes below the fundamental. Not like on a reed instrument, I don't think, but or a, or a uh, brass instrument or a tr something like that. But with a, an instrument where you could have multiple strings resonating at the same time, like a, a, a zither or a dulcimer, you might hear those undertones, they're called. So, if you play A above middle C on any instrument, you're creating something that's vibrating at 440 cycles or impulses per second. That means it goes through the entire wave cycle 440 times in one second. Those, that wave cycle contains amplitude or volume information. It's vibrating so fast that it sounds like a steady tone, but if you were to play a really low note, you will be able to hear volume fluctuations, although some of those pitches are so low that we can't really hear them, we can feel them. So that fundamental of the 440 is called an A. Now, if you play an A on the piano and you play an A on a violin, those sounds are much different. And a big part of the reason that they sound different is the volume of the overtones that are heard above the fundamental. There are other reasons, but let's just do that basic thing. So let me just square share my screen here with you. Let's do this one. All right, so this right here is a representation of drawbars, they're called. And you would find these on most electronic organs. You'd find something similar on something that does a similar function on pipe organs, but they, they physically look different. Each one of these has a different color, and they slide in and out. When they're at eight, which is this number here, that's the loudest volume, and you, so you can slide it in and adjust it, and if it was in so that the two and one were what you saw, then it would be at volume two. Right now, they're all at volume eight. It's full out. So this one right here that's eight feet that is the fundamental of the pitch. 
And then with the Hammond organ, these notes go up what is called the harmonic series. So, so these are naturally occurring tones that you can hear when you play a note or speak. We can't distinguish between all of them until you train your ears, but they're all sounding simultaneously. With the Hammond organ, you can adjust the volume of those harmonics to create different timbres. The Hammond organ was the first, what I would consider the first synthesizer, and I would consider that it's there's multiple kinds of synthesis. The main one that's used is called subtractive synthesis, where you take a waveform that's harmonically rich oftentimes, and you use filters to subtract some of those harmonics. There is also a method of synthesis called additive synthesis, where you're adding harmonics to a fundamental pitch. And that's what the Hammond organ does. So if we look here, this is eight. That's the unison. That's this pitch right here. Whoops. Middle C. Four. These, these are feet. So these are, these are representations of the Hammond organ is an electronic instrument. A pipe organ is a mechanical instrument, although it does have electronic elements to it, modern ones, in that wind goes through a pipe, and these pipes have different lengths, so they're tuned to create the pitches. So the, 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 the eight-foot pipe is considered the fundamental of a tone. The four-foot pipe is an octave higher. So when you double the frequency of something, you... Transpo you you uh, transpose it an octave. So if something's at 440 hertz, it's A above middle C. If something is at 880 hertz, which is 2 times 440, it's an octave above that. So this is an octave above, so that's this C here. The two, oh, I'm just going to go through these ones that are white. So the, this 2-foot one here right, is 2 octaves above. And then this one here is three octaves above. So all the white ones, you've got the fundamental, one octave above, two octaves above, and three octaves above. This first black one is two and two thirds. That is an octave and a fifth above the fundamental. And that's the first harmonic that's a little bit different, right? It's not an exact replication of the pitch an octave higher. It's an octave plus a fifth. This next one is one and three fifths. They call it the seventeenth. It's an octave. Uh, it's two octaves and a third, right? So let's see: middle C, one octave, two octaves, and then your third here. And I'm going to demonstrate this so that you can hear it shortly. This next one, which is one and one third, that's two octaves and a fifth. So here's middle C. Here's your first octave. Uh, I'm sorry, here's middle C. Here's your first octave. Here's your second octave. And here's your fifth above that. So it's interesting, right? We've got C, G. We've got Cs. We've got a couple of Gs. And we've got an E. So that's a major triad that's being formed by the overtones. Now, the overtones go higher and higher and they get closer together and some of the pitches, like they're not in any standard tuning. They're micro-tuned. As they go up, they get out of what we consider to be in tune. But these are the ones that you hear the most. And there's um, a reason why the tonal music grew out of fifths, and it's because it's part of physics, right? The physics of sound. There are a couple of bits in there that might be above some of you, your pay grade, um, might be above all of our pay grades. But uh, the one thing I want to say is that the dominant, when he, when he talks about the dominant, when you go up the scale, th music theorists give each pitch of the scale and the chord that is derived from that a name. 
So in the key of C, the ma C major, the C major triad, which is C, E, and G, let's see. which is these three pitches. Oh, let's see, you can see it here, right? That's called the tonic. The one on, on F is called the subdominant, and the one on G, which is the fifth step of the scale, which is also the first non-repetitive overtone, is called the dominant. So in tonal music, the relationship between the dominant and the tonic is what defines the key that a piece is in. And more specifically, the tritone that comes from adding a seventh onto that dominant, which in this case would be BF uh, above the G, right? You have G, D, B, D, and F. If you take the F and the B, right, those two pitches are called a tri, they're a tritone apart. And they have to resolve in a way that brings us back to the tonic. That's just the way it works, right? So the key of a piece is defined by its relationship to its dominant. And that's what he's talking about. And that's all based on the overtone series, which is what we're finding here. Oh, I know I wasn't making any sound on the keyboard. Ona, I'm going to do that now. Okay, you can hear that? Okay, so that's a horrible sound. But what I was saying before, that's C, E, and G, right? That's F. Now the dominant is G and on a, G, a triad on a G chord. So if I add the seventh, let me play that down here. These two notes here, the B and the F, that form a tritone, what's called a tritone because it's three whole steps away. One, two, three. That has to resolve back to the tonic of the key. So that's how these fundamentals, these, these, um, the harmonic series define, has defined what tonality is with us, for us. Physics. Okay, so here we've got our Hammond clone, Hammond B3 clone, and I've got the first draw bar out. So I'm going to play my C, and that's the fundamental tone. If I pull this in, you see it gets softer, so that's like a volume control. This next one here, the forefoot, I wish I could make this bigger, but I can't. Um, this forefoot brings in the octave. Right? You can see how I can balance the sounds. So that's the first overtone is the octave. So I bring this in. It's this pitch and that pitch. So as I bring this, you see how that sounds the same? Right? I'm playing two notes, and I'm going to play one note. You see how there's two pitches sounding right now. Now, if I bring this guy in, right, you're hearing this pitch, this pitch, and that pitch. You're hearing three pitches. I'm playing one note, and you're hearing three pitches. I'm going to skip this. If I bring this in, is the sound glitchy? Or can everybody hear this? So that's my octave again. So that's this note here. If I bring this out. Okay, thank you, Roberto. 
If I pull this in, we're going to add the third. So you see that's a triad. So I'm playing this note. So I'm actually, these three pitches are sounding on the keyboard. So these are all based on the harmonic series. And another fifth, another tonic. So this sounds like one pitch. If I were to just play it, it just sounds like one pitch to you, right? But when you think about, when I bring them in like this, you can really follow that it's multiple pitches. And every sound except for a sine wave that you hear is made up of multiple pitches sounding simultaneously. Now, I just have a couple more points to make before class is over. Let me show you something. Right? Right now I'm playing what's called a C major seventh chord in a drop two and drop four voicing. So I've got my C and my G, and then my E and my B. I hope I'm doing this right. Yeah. So if I bring in the third here. Oh, wait. Now, I got that wrong. I'm sorry. But you can hear I'm playing just a fifth right now. That is a much more complex chord than just two notes. So what does that mean? That means if you're gonna be playing tight chords like this. Close position chords. And you don't want them to, you want them to sound smooth. You would pick a sound that doesn't have a lot of overtones to it. If you want it to sound harsh and biting, the same. You hear how harsh that is? It's dissonant, right? No, it's not dissonant. It's because I'm adding all these overtones in here. So, This is helpful to illustrate that when you are creating a piece of music, the timbres you choice can, that you choose to create your music can help you express the emotion that you're going for, right? Right, that sounds one way. I bring in these odd overtones. Right, it starts to sound a little, it sounds okay, but it's a little grating. Like that sounds out of tune. So does that, right? And then you can, there'll be some halftone clashes in some of the upper harmonics for some of those, some of those sounds. So this is just an introduction Get your ears sensitive to start thinking about some of these things, give you a little theory behind it. And um, it's not anything that's going to be doing any assignment, but I got to show you some of this stuff. It'll help you when you start mixing things. You start understanding some of these principles. Let me show you what I mean by that really quickly. So I'm going to plug an EQ into here. And I'm going to do this one because it has a it has a, a frequency spectrum that's in it. And let's uh, keep this open. And let's open up our DB33 and let's keep that open. So we're gonna keep these two open. And I'm gonna play this C. And you see that there's a lot of energy right around here that's like 220. Now,
Now, this sound, if I wanted to make this sound less harsh with EQ, right? You see how I'm bringing that down? I'm adjusting the volume of that harmonic there. Let me leave this open and let me get a different EQ. Let me just use our EQ7 that comes with Pro Tools. Okay. Let's see, let's get this set up so we can see all three. So I'm gonna play this note. So I'm looking here. So that's at 824, I can read that here. So if I go here and I go 824, I'm scrolling in and I've got that. There, that's close enough. And I make my, what's called a cue and I've, I'll go over this. And you see how I've gotten rid of this. Some of these harmonics here that are really causing a lot of trouble. See that? That's a problem. And if you've got an instrument that has that sound, you know, you would work on reducing it. And this is one way that you would make it so that if you've got two instruments playing together and they're clashing, you have to figure out which frequencies are clashing and change the volume of those frequencies. And that's what you do with EQ. And it's, again, for us as musicians, I like to think of it in terms of pitches. Um, my friends that are engineers, they think of it in terms of frequencies. And I can do that, but for me, oh, that fifth is just way too hot in that pitch. The fifth fund, the fifth harmon, the harmonic of the fifth, it's causing too much dissonance, and I can reduce that harmonic using EQ to make the sound a little bit more palatable. So um, I know that this might sound esoteric and, and a little bit beyond what we've talked so far during our classes, but I'm going to be introducing more of this as we start working on our mixing a little bit more after this assignment. So uh, yes, okay, remind us. Okay, so, right. So this is called target mode, this red button. And if you turn it off, that means you can keep all these windows open. If target mode is on, let's see. So let's say, let's, let me just close all these out. So I'm gonna open this up. If target mode is on, when I hit the next one, that one disappears and this one comes up. If I turn target mode off, I can have multiple plug-in windows open at the same time. Yeah, train your ears. That's really all I can say is you have to become sensitive to listening to the relationships of those sounds between the different instruments. You know, there is a way to do that, and I'll show you that. And it basically is that, like, um, you do... You, I'll, I'll do it when I have some stuff to play and you just sweep, you exaggerate, and you sweep, and you listen for it. I'm going to show that in a future class for sure, all right? But the best thing to do is to, like, start training your ears to hear into a sound and to really dive in and to be able to pick out those, at least some of those harmonics. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's class. Um, this will be up, the review video, I'll, I'll try to get it up tomorrow. I've recorded it in a way that will mean less editing work for me. And so hopefully I can get it up tomorrow. But if not tomorrow, by Wednesday, um, the review video for this class. Um, yeah, so for, for me, it, it just, I have to edit these things and then I have to render them and they take time to render and then I've got to upload them and they end up being like 15 or 20 gigabytes, which takes a couple of hours to upload. So it's, it's a bit of work uploading the, re, the re review videos, especially if I want to have one that has decent audio quality, which hopefully this will have. I've been recording the audio into two 
methods because I'm not quite sure about the new way of, that I'm doing it, whether it's going to be as nice sounding as I like. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. But if not, I still have my backup, which I did on the first two videos, which I thought the audio sounded pretty good. So head, head, head on to the next week's assignment. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. And I will catch you next week. Have a great day. And I'm going to try to figure out why I can't hear you guys anymore. <laughs>